David Harding here at Mercury Marina on the Hamble and I'm about to have a sail on the Astus 22.5 trimaran which is right here. It's the big brother, big sister, of the Astus 20.5, which I sailed last year. And as we can see, it folds in. So it is occupying a normal monomoran size space in a marina, because both hulls fold in. This is actually at marina width at the moment. It can be made even narrower for trailing down to within the 2.5 meter, eight foot, uh, four or five, whatever it is, trailing limit. So as we head down the river shortly, we will extend the floats ready for sailing because that's what we're going to do. There is wind and there is the sky. So there's some wet stuff up there, all being well. Not too much of it's going to land on us today, but we will have to take what we get. So we will have a proper look at the boat as we go. But in the meantime, let's talk to the man who actually knows about it. Here's Hein from Boats on Wheels. Hello. So, hello, hello, we meet again. <laughs> the boat's been fed since we were last afloat and it's grown a little bit. Yeah. You must have been giving it some good nourishment. It's expanded yeah. um, in every direction. It's a little bit beamy. It's only, I mean, it is more or less two feet longer, isn't it? I mean, as a 22.5, yeah. and it's, it's great that the French actually, actually speak English and designate their boats in, 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 in feet and inches. So long may they, or, or feet and decimal feet, <laughs> um, feet and, and um, points of the feet, points of the foot. 22.5, that's all right, that, that's fine. We, we can accept that. So this is the second design by VPLP, I think, isn't it? Third, third. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon, it's the third, because they started with the 16.5, was it? Then the 20.5, now the 22.5. And I think you said it was launched about a year ago? Yeah. yeah. And, and this is the first one over here? Indeed, it's the first uh, UK, UK model, brought it over a few weeks ago. Right. And we've been very busy ever since because it's drawn a lot of interest. And, and, and you picked it up from France, didn't you? Yeah, we, we actually took, our, took it on a short holiday in, on the coast of Brittany. We had a wonderful time, luxuriating in the amount of space that we suddenly had <laughs> and uh, having a lot of fun. Well, compared with the 20.5, there is a, a lot more space even just walking around. And I'm, I'm only going to poke the camera down below very briefly. We'll have a proper look down there later, but there is a load more room than there is on, on the 20.5. So are, are people looking at the 20.5 and, and this, and, and it's still very light and easy to trail, but what is the weight, of, uh, the trailing weight? Uh, 650 kilos. So it's actually, um, it's only about 150 kilos more than the 20.5, which is, which basically means that it's still towable behind a normal family car. That's, that's 650, total trailing weight. Uh, yeah, so that's the tra trailing weight and you need to add another 350 kilos or so for the trailer as well. Yeah, so it, so, so the boat itself, so you don't need a braked, oh, you do need a brake trailer because it, the total is over 750. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay, well, that, that's fine. I mean, for a 22 foot boat, I mean, that would only be expected really. Indeed, and they supplied the boat, uh, the trailer with a, it's a canting trailer, so that me means it will tip back, so you can, you can pick up the boat from shallow, much shallower water without getting your, uh, car wheels wet. And, and you, ha you have to immerse the, 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 the trailer itself then, no, presumably no. you don't? So, so, so the bearings and, and the brakes can, can stay dry? More or less, yes. Mm. It's Depending on, on, on the trailer and, and conditions and all the rest of it. Mm. Okay, good. So now we are going to see Hein extending the port float just with a little bit of winching. Then a pin slots in 
at the aft end. And there's another one at the forward end. So it just has to be aligned. The tubes slide in and out pretty comfortably. Might need a tiny bit of jiggling just to, to drop the pin in. And that is it with the help of an extension pole and a winch. It can be done without. Presumably this, this pole doesn't have a, a second second purpose, does it? Yes, it can't. It does, yeah. it does or is it for yeah. raising the mast? You can take, yeah, you can take this end off and then you can substitute it for the mast lifting pole. Ah, right. The mast lifting pole. Yes. And that makes means you're not carrying as much in the way of poles on board. That makes perfect sense. We're motoring down the river now. Only at a fairly gentle speed. Helps to release the backstay. And there we are, pretty much fully extended. All we need now is to drop in the pins. visual check to make sure the holes are lined up. Presumably it's easier if you take your weight, you don't even need to take your weight off the trampoline. No, it actually helps if they're too far out. <laughs> yes, if it, yes it'll, it'll bring them in I suppose. Yeah. And then just tighten up the trampoline lines and job done. We are now in sailing mode. If I were to describe the Astus 22.5 in one word, it would have to be fun. Two words, fast fun. It really does sizzle along very nicely, but it's not an extreme boat in any way. It's very reassuring to sail, even when we were pushing on a bit under Jenica, reaching as shy as, as we could to keep the apparent wind up. It felt absolutely rock solid. There's so much buoyancy in those floats, 1150 litres in each of them, and that compares with the boat's weight of about 650k, or for those of us who speak English, about 1400 pounds. And there's a lot of beam as well, so it, it feels very, very reassuringly stable. And I think it's a boat that monohull sailors would find it very easy to adapt to. Probably a trimaran, I've often thought this, is... is maybe more natural territory for a monohull sailor than a catamaran would be. You've got the central hull, you sail at a slight angle of heel, so there are just two hulls in the water. It does behave perhaps more like a monohull than a catamaran does. There's a lot to be said for a boat like this. It's shallow draft, you can dry it out on the beach, and it's just a tremendous amount of fun. So, yeah, not as big down below as a monohull of, of similar size. That is the nature of the beast. You have to decide what's most important to you. But for, yeah, fast fun on three hulls, a boat like this really would be worth having a jolly good look at. Bringing the floats in is pretty much as you would expect, the reverse of pulling them out. Take out the pin in the aft beam, there's the starboard float already brought in. Now it's a matter of moving the pin from the forward beam. It's easy when the load's off and there's no compression, so the backstay is slack. That's the pin out. You can see that the float begins to move in as soon as there's any weight on the trampoline. But here's the in-haul line that's going to do the rest of it and make life easy. Just a little bit of very gentle winching now. And note the blue tape on the beam as it slides in and when that gets to the outside of the 
fixed part of the beam, the pin will pop in and go in fully when everything else is jiggled around a little bit, but just taking some load on the backstay in the meantime just helps to stabilise everything. And now the pin goes in at the forward end, and we're ready to drop back into our berth. The fact that you spent, was it, was it ten days, two weeks yes, when you picked yeah, the boat up? Yes, we had a ten-day holiday over in, uh, in the southern coast of Brittany, uh, just two of us. Yeah, on, on, on the boat straight out of the factory? Yeah, yeah. So, so you went armed with, 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 with camping, camping kit yes, for, for exactly. two weeks, yeah. picked up a brand new boat and, and cruised around the Gulf de Morbihan and, and surrounding waters. Indeed, there's no better way to pick up a boat really than go and, go and sail it straight away. Mm. Yeah, and, and get to know. You didn't sail it back. No, no, we needed the trailer as well as the boat, so um, yes, there was only way to get it back. But um, no, it's, it's a good way to get to know the boat and, and for us it's really quite important because I need to be able to talk how people might use the boat and obviously from our own experience I need to be able to say this is how we did it and, and this is what we found and it's quite helpful because you find lots of little everyone does it themselves too to find little little ways and means of doing things which which work for them yeah I mean so so two of you on a boat pretty much continually for yeah. two weeks you did sleep aboard yes and, yeah, and yeah. every night and, and, and spent yeah. the, the entire time yeah, on, on, the, on the boat. Yeah, typically, on the, either a swinging moor or, or an anchor or something like that, and uh, it was very, and, very and nice. And on deck. Yes. 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 So we we, we cooked out here in in the cockpit because uh, I, I don't like having um, uh, um, I don't like cooking inside the cabin, um, and the beauty of, of of that out here is because the boats swing with the wind rather than the tide. Mm. That means you've always got a little wind sh shadow here that you could cook in. Means meanwhile you've got everything outside of the the area that you've got inside <coughs> and you've got rooms spread around in, in inside too so yeah we found it worked really well as Issa said earlier you can just drive the boat into the beach um, and, and step ashore wet wade ashore dry out yes so, and that and, and that's obviously that's very French people they, they do that at the drop of a hat um, which is which is great but actually there's quite a lot of customers of ours who ask us all about beachability because you know people have got kids especially what, is the, what, what do the kids want? They, want? they don't necessarily want to be on the water a lot, they want to be on the mm. uh, on the beach and playing with and making sandcastles. Yeah, and, and like then that. have a quick blast at 15 knots across yes. to, get to, the, to the next beach. <laughs> well, that's the, and that's the other thing, because children get bored on, on long passages. So, you know, if you've, got, if you've got a few youngsters who, you know, who otherwise would, would be spending hours on end wait, waiting to get to their destination, they get there twice the speed, so... Mm. Yeah. Happy day. Right, all I haven't done is explain what we've got up here, which is actually fairly self-explanatory. So this berth is 79, which is 6 foot 7 in English, long, and uh, about 50 something wide. So it's a good size double with the infill here. And it's raining. Oh, I is just it? Got smash, come down. Okay. Yep. And you've got loads of space up here. Well, that is an enormous battery. And then you've just got a power section up there with a a sort of ring frame to stiffen it. Underneath here is loads of storage where you can put a lot of the chemical loo and here's the um, extension pole for the floats and you can put a dinghy and oars and there's your leg for the cockpit table which is this infill here which just goes outside so it serves a multiple multiplicity of purposes. Um, and what else do we need to look at? Quarter berths, which again, well over six feet long, going all the way aft either side of the cockpit. And then all this space back here for whatever you like. That's the battery, spare battery for the electric outboard. So, really, very simple down here. These shelves are going to be made a bit shorter. You've got windows so you can see out and you've got a couple of lights there and there and no fancy headlinings. And a bedside table each to put your alarm <laughs> clock on, your glass of water, your reading book. All the things you want close at hand, or you, or you could tuck, tuck them in, in these little side pockets or, or, or up there, couldn't you? Yes. Mm. And a little patch over the top of the bunk as well. Which I have now closed because it's raining. Yeah. So back here, 
we have a blocker which will accommodate Oh yeah, that's, that's yeah. fine too. Yeah. Not exactly what we can see. Cleaning material and tools and warts and fenders, etc, etc. And a couple of open cubby lockers either side. And then here's the slot that the table leg goes into. Can you move the bunk infill out from the cabin? And here is a locker at the other end of the boat, the anchor locker. We can see the cross beams for the floats going through it. And there's space for warp and chain and that's a, a fortress, so fairly lightweight, I guess, but you must have used it during yeah, your no, two weeks. it's worked fine, and we had it in the very strong currents of uh, southern Brittany, mm, so, mm. and it stood, it stood that test, so yeah, it worked, worked really well. And, 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 and you've got yeah. these, which we spoke about briefly earlier, if I can actually open them. Another pair of hands, useful here. So they do extend a little way forward and aft, so room for several fenders in there. And a lovely smell of fresh starine <laughs> coming out as well. You know it's a new boat. Actually, it'll probably still smell out in 10 years' time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, they're, yeah, they're, they're actually quite spacious, those lockers. Mm. The aperture is quite small for the for them, but it's uh, but you, you, could put, you could put a lot of quite a lot of stuff in them. Yes, well, but you just want to make sure you don't end up overloading the boat, so it's yeah, <laughs> it does a mere 12 knots instead of 15. Yeah, that would spoil the fun. 